Hi, my name's Gareth, and in this video, we're going to take a look at brewing using cloth filter papers. Prior to 1908, if you'd have been brewing coffee and want to filter the grounds away from the water, you'd have been using some form of linen to do that. But then a German housewife called Melita Benz invented the filter paper. She wanted to find a better method of filtering coffee and she explored a variety of different materials and eventually it was her son's blotting paper that she used and produced the best results. But there is a place for cloth filters and there's a couple of brewing methods I've used over the years that were specifically designed to use cloth filters. The first is the coffee siphon. I've uh, not yet put a video together about brewing with a coffee siphon but I have that plan, it's a really cool method and that works really well if you use cloth filters. And we've also got this, which is a wood neck, um, and it has a cloth filter that we're gonna brew through here. The difference between cloth and paper is down to what is able to pass through them. Now, paper will take the oils out of the coffee as well as those coffee solids. So you tend to get a cleaner, crisper coffee in the container at the bottom. Cloth, on the other hand, lets those oils soak through. So you get a slightly different character of coffee. Um, there's a lot more body or perceived body, and you're probably getting the full character of the coffee coming through. Coffee press produces something similar, I suppose, but the beauty of the cloth filter is it will take out any of that kind of fine sediment that you often associate with a coffee press or cafetiere. If you are going to delve into the world of cloth filters, uh, you need to be aware of looking after them between brews. They need a bit of care and attention. Once you've started to use them, they will start to have coffee oils and coffee stain over them, and you really don't want to let them dry out. They're at their best, if I think, if they're used every single day. And between use, you will rinse them out and then store them damp in the fridge either in a plastic bag or in a container of water. Whatever you do, don't let them dry out because the flavour taint on here will be very difficult to remove. It's the kind of thing, if you're only going to use incidentally, becomes a bit of a pain, a bit annoying. But like I said, daily use kind of works really, really well. So before we delve into the brewing method itself, I'm going to go through what I've got on the bench here and what we're going to be using today. Um, I've got my kettle set at 98 degrees. So I'm aiming for about 93, 94 degree temperature in here. So I've stacked it a little bit higher so that any cooling between hitting the coffee, hitting the paper, the cloth and all the stirring is kind of catered for. I have my coffee. We're going for a Kenyan today. I've been brewing uh, this coffee all week and it's been producing a stunning coffee um, something about this particular choice of coffee that works really well um, with that body coming through into the cup. I've obviously got my wood neck here with my filter ready to go and I've got scales. I'm going to be working on scales throughout all of this. Finally, I need a spoon to do some stirring and a cup or a mug to enjoy my brew at the end. So first thing I want to do is I want to grind my coffee. I'm going to weigh out my dose, so I'm going to use these scales, tear them, and I'm going to use 19 grams of coffee today. So I've gone for 57 grams to every litre, and this uses about a third of a litre. So a 19 gram dose seems to work really nicely. So I'll get these weighed out, and then it's on to the grinder to get grinding. Before I do, I'm just going to get my system warmed up and I'm going to get some water into here. I want to get some warmth in here so I'm going to rinse this filter and warm up the whole container below. While that's draining, I'm going to get my coffee ground, get this emptied and then we can start brewing. So I'm going to put my grinds in here and I'm going to tear my scales. 
And I'm going to follow a typical filter method for this. So water being poured in the top is going to filter through just like a V60, just like a Chemex. Uh, the brew time for this, you've not got a lot of coffee in here. So I've been around about the two and a half, maybe to three minute range. It's been producing some great tasting coffee. Um, stopwatch you're going to need because we're going to time the brew. And I'm going to, um, I've got a built-in stopwatch here so I can get this going. And then I'm going to start with the bloom. So we're looking for about 30 to 40 grams of coffee, sorry, of water in here. And then we're going to stir it thoroughly to make sure those grounds are saturated. Now I've produced a video on the coffee bloom and why we do this. And I've put a link up here but it's really important to go through this, particularly if your coffee is really fresh. So I'm just going to let that stand for about 50 seconds or up until about 50 seconds. So it took me about 20 seconds to do the pouring and the stirring and then about the 50 second mark I'm going to start the actual brew proper. And I'm going to again pour quite vigorously at the start to make sure everything's nicely saturated and then I'm going to go in a circular motion as I go along. So let's get going. I'll always lap around the edges. I want the grounds to be in the water. I don't want them hanging around the edges, getting stuck upon the filter. So as I pour, I will always just lap the edges to make sure I'm washing those grounds down into the water. And it's a target water amount of 330 grams. Nice little circular motions, lap around the edges. Now, if you're really good at this, you can pour in one continuous motion so that the, the drain at the bottom matches the rate of pour at the top. Um, I'm a little bit too heavy handed for that, just cannot do it at that pace. And to be honest with you, the kettle, the element at the bottom is a little bit heavy to enable me to do that. I'm at 290 grams, I've got a little bit more to get in. 330 being the target, there we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir now for this final drawdown, just to make sure I get a nice even extraction. Exactly as I do with the V60, exactly as I do with the Chemex. And then all we've gotta do now is wait for the coffee to draw through. Now, I've been really lucky uh, this week. Um, one of my kind subscribers has sent me a link to a company in the UK that's producing cloth filters for a variety of different brew methods. Aeropress, Chemex, V60, even the kind of um, size four filters that fit into uh, batch brew, electric drippers. Um, so I'm really grateful to Tim Marshall for giving me this link. I'll put the link down in the description below. In the coming weeks, I'm going to test each of the brew methods with a cloth and paper filter. And there'll be a video coming up that kind of explores whether that filter works for that particular brew method. So Tim, thank you so much for that recommendation. So I think we're good. We've drained through about 3 minutes, 20 seconds in the end. Always like to give my coffee a bit of a, a swirl or a stir before I drink it and let's see where we end up with. Now the trouble with video is that in all honesty I wouldn't be drinking my coffee straight away. It's a little bit hot at this stage. I do want my coffee to cool for two to three minutes before I taste it. Um, I think um, personally I perceive the flavours, I get the sweetness through better if it's cool for that period of time. But for the sake of not editing things out on this video, we'll go when it's a little bit warm. And the first thing that strikes you, it, it's got this creamy body to it. There's so much more body than if you brew with a V60 and a filter paper. And again, like I said, they've got a lovely tropical Kenyan here. Um, we had kind of rhubarb notes in there. And there's kind of like a custard undertone, kind of a vanilla creamy tone anyway which I feel is really accentuated using the cloth paper, uh, cloth filter brewing method. If you've got any thoughts or questions or comments about uh, the video, please feel free 
uh, to leave your comments. I uh, love reading them. Thanks for all the recent subscribes. Um, thanks for watching this video. And until next time, goodbye.